Well, first, I want to thank you all for uh, coming this evening. But um, for those of you who are familiar with me, uh, I'm Kevin Smith, and uh, I come to you from the little land of Litchfield, uh, which is located uh, right in between our state's two largest cities, Manchester and Nashua. And it's where my wife and I have called home since 2004, uh, though we actually both grew up right next to there in Londonderry. And Susie's a native of New Hampshire. She grew up in Londonderry. And, uh, I can't say I was born here, but I can say I got here as quick as I could. <laughs> and there's no reason why we can't turn the economy around in New Hampshire as well. And the thing I've been running on since day one is talking about how we can make New Hampshire into the most economically competitive state in the country over the next decade. And when I say economically competitive, I mean in terms of you know, high paying sustainable jobs in the state, attracting them here, whether they're in the advanced manufacturing industry or whether it's the high tech sector. Um, biotech jobs, uh, healthcare related jobs, financial services, all these are good high paying jobs of the 21st century that we can attract to this state. And we can make ourselves one of the most economically competitive states in the country. But to do that, we've got to put the right policies in place. And that's why I've said that we really need a governor who has a long term vision for New Hampshire, who's thinking out 10 years to the year 2020, instead of just managing budget to bike budget and, and managing to the next crisis. But we also need a governor who's got a specific economic plan that's going to get us there as well. Uh, because, you know, there's a lot of candidates. I, I've tried to approach this race from the very beginning, looking at it from a voter and saying, what do I look for out of candidates when they're running? And I'm tired of just the same old rhetoric. I'm tired of just hearing the sound bites, you know, the regurgitated ideological sound bites that you hear out of Washington. I want to hear real ideas. I want to hear real solutions. And I want to know how exactly do you plan on you know, doing those things. So you'll hear all the candidates say, well, we need more jobs in this state. Well, no kidding. Of course we need more jobs in the state, but how exactly are we going to do that? You know, right now as a state, we pay some of the highest electric rates in the country, fifth highest electric rates. Uh, we pay, we have the fifth highest business taxes in the country as well. We pay some of the highest health insurance premiums. We're now the third oldest state in the country too. We've lost more young people, 18 to 34 year olds, over the last decade than any other state in the country per capita. And we need to make government, state government, more accountable to the taxpayers as well. And that's why I've put forward a very bold economic plan for our state that I think will lead us to a path of prosperity for the future. Things like lowering our corporate tax rate. I've called for a phase down of the next seven years of our business profits tax, phasing it down to 5% by the year 2020. Phasing down our business enterprise tax, which is a tax on payroll, in our state, phasing that down to a quarter percent by the year 2020, which by the way is where it started out at when it was first implemented in the 1990s. And then if you're a small business owner and you're doing a half a million dollars or less in revenue a year and you're not making a profit, exempting you entirely from having to pay that business enterprise tax because we tax businesses today that don't even make a profit uh, in our state, which really is a disincentive for entrepreneurs to want to start jobs here in the state, uh, to want to start a business here in the state of New Hampshire because oftentimes startups aren't making money the first few years. And so what I've said is that if they're not making money, they're doing less than a half a million dollars in revenue, exempt them entirely. And even in the last session, there was also a piece of legislation that was passed in 2011 by Senator Sanborn, and it was called the, um, the Business to Government Modernization Act of 2011, which is looking at modernizing certain aspects of state government that so badly need it because we're so woefully in the 20th century still when it comes to modernizing state government. I mean, you could start an LLC today in Delaware from your living room in New Hampshire, from your iPad, or your laptop, or whatever. You can't even start a business in New Hampshire from your living room in New Hampshire online today. You still have to do all the paperwork, go up to the Secretary of State's office and all this stuff. And I've met so many small business owners who live in border communities because they want to live in New Hampshire. It's the best state in the country to live in. But they own businesses in Massachusetts because they're keeping more of their money, they're growing more jobs down there. And that's not right. I have an undergirding philosophy that it's not state government that creates jobs, but it's state government that creates the environment and atmosphere for good jobs to be created primarily in the private sector. And if we do these things, we can become a lot more aggressive about pursuing companies outside the state of New Hampshire. New Let them all compete on the same level playing field. Let's not pick winners and losers because you know what? That'll help them get more efficient and more cost efficient as well. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we have done as a state to put us in the position we're in right now. 
But it doesn't mean that we can't get out of this position either. But it's going to take the right leadership in Concord to do it. It's going to take the right ideas, the right solutions, and someone that actually knows how state government works. And that's where I feel I'm uniquely qualified because I think I've brought the best solutions to the table, but I know how to get the reforms as well. Having served in the legislature, having served under a governor and a former U.S. senator, you know, having run a state agency and actually gotten good efficiency reforms in a state budget, but also having advocated for good limited government policy and pro-business uh, policy from the outside as well. You know, the governor's office, as most of you know, it's a two-year term, which means there's no time for on-the-job training. You know, you've got to know what your plan is when you're going in there and how are you going to go about executing that plan. You've really got to be ready to go on day one. And uh, if I'm elected your next governor, I'll be ready and rearing to go on that first day. So, again, thank you very, very much for coming this evening. Um, I hope I can earn your vote on September 11th, next Tuesday. And uh, certainly if you get any questions before we completely use, lose the uh, sunlight here, by all means, you know. It's PSNH turning it off. Feel free to ask, yeah. Thank you. Thanks.